Okay, this is the uh, first shot of the broadcast I've done, recorded today, 1st of October, in Wycollar. This is actually not the trees I was talking to uh, Bridget about, but this is walking into the village and through the village. So I'm rambling on about um, various parts of the village and uh, what, what's what and everything else. Uh, I think I meet quite a few, well I meet quite a few tourists and uh, one or two of them we talk with but um, unfortunately the wind as per usual gets up it always seems to do the same when you come out with the with a camera but um, let's see how it goes anyway one there is a sapling from the main one I think. Yeah, it's the same kind of tree. And the farm through the trees on the left here used to be in my family. It's called Lowlands Farm and uh, when I looked in the Family history, there's another big tree for Bridget. When I looked at the family history, this farm is part of our history. You can't quite see it through the trees I don't think. Mason around here called Stanley Cookson. He actually did quite a lot of work on the buildings down here, reclaiming stone and uh, recreating windows in the right style and everything. And of course, he signed everything off with his name. Now, on the right here, this farmhouse is called Lave Hills. It's one which I looked at when I was a kid in the 1960s and thought about converting. Well, somebody's done it, and it's probably worth two, oh, half a million quid, maybe, something like that. So now we'll see it was derelict. There used to be a barn on this side of the road on the left, which is now gone, totally gone. Another building for sale, goodness me. This little cottage on the left here is called Lave Hills. I think, oh well, no it isn't. Not called Lave Hills. I used to know the lady who lived there. And she had an extension built out of the back by Mr Cookson. I forget the name of the cottage, it, it isn't Lave Hills. On occasion, this little stream here, this innocent little stream flowing through here, which 
it does have trout in it sufficiently flooded to come all over this bridge when I'm standing here was underwater that's how much water can come down here that's filling in and completely blocking the bridge and another of the very big trees there that's about 100 feet high Somebody used to do a three-point turn, I think. Pepper Hill Barn. Let's have a look up there, I think. See why it's called the hill? Because it's got a bit of a hill on it. <laughs> Rather appropriate. Some of the buildings down here are very old. Some of them are newer. Uh, obviously some have been rebuilt. And rebuilt again. You can tell what, which ones are the oldest by the style of the mullions and the windows. Let's check that this is still recording. see the mouse on here. Yeah, it's still recording, good. In fact, um, on the left here there used to be um, a dairy parlour and this has it's been converted into something as well. not been converted it's not been goodness me another one for sale it's the whole village for sale backside house now this is an interesting one because the doorway that's on it has got a traditional doorway frame on it and it's been uh, obviously included on it for authenticity but the window, windows are actually all wrong Un, undecorated uh, stonework on the windows, it just doesn't look right to me I'm being a purist I suppose and the old barn was over there on the other side where the garages are Again, a nice property if anybody wants it. A very nice front garden here. And the sale agent is that one there. You can see the agent's, agent's sign if you want to, want to buy it. Got a bid for it. Now, another bridge doesn't like its bridges. There are two main road ones and some rather interesting old ones. The farm on the right is uh, a mixture of edges. The bit at this end is quite is relatively new by white collar standards. Oh, got another one for sale. It's been added on at a later date. White collar farm is probably one of the newer of the old buildings in the village. If that's not a contradiction in terms.
there are actually uh, somewhere on here, there they are. And by appointment only. And this used to be a cow shed. As you see now it's a cafe. I actually remember it as a cow shed. <laughs> And uh, you can see that the farm here is two different ages. This end section is older and the bit of the far end was added on. Plant troughs are authentic white colour though. And this is one of the oldest buildings, but again, it's got a newer extension on it. On the front, there's a new section with the peak roof, which doesn't match, well, it doesn't match it to a degree, but it obviously wasn't original. See why there's no parking uh, allowed in the village, apart from the inhabitants. And when the Friends of Y Collar were formed a long while ago, this little building at the end was their headquarters. You see, everything's been added on in stone to match in with the the actual village itself. There were more buildings over here but they've uh, fell into disrepair and got taken down. I mentioned bridges. Well this bridge is the famous one. The arch on this side is distorted. The arch on the other side is, uh, as you can see, is proper arch shape, but this one on the side is, is definitely distorted slightly. And the building over there, that is supposed to be Ferndean Manor. Oh, actually, Wycolor Hall it's called. And uh, I had a hand in that actually. The only top window left on the top side there is one which I helped preserve. So, and this was a long time ago. If I hadn't put a hand in there, that would be gone, I think. But let's walk. Let's walk across the uh, the bridge so we can look at the other bridge. This is the second bridge here. It's obviously a Ford. Where cars can get across, but the bridges are pedestrian only. see how old this bridge is, just look at the wear in the stone there. Tremendous amount of wear. Beware of uneven flooring. <laughs> You're not kidding. Health and safety. Yeah, health and safety gone mad, yes. I've just mentioned the wear and the stone when you're standing now there. Imagine the. Oh, well, that was midnight when it was built. Yeah. Okay, now you're looking up at the other bridge in the centre of the village. 
which is a stone slabs. Stone slabs on top of a couple of pillars. And that's uh, I think possibly predates this one we're standing next to now. And uh, I'm pleased to see that window still there. Really pleased to see it still there. Now the distortion on the on the bridge. You can see from here. It's almost as if the left-hand side of the arch has gone got drunk. I'm not sure whether it uh, was actually built like that or has gone like that. And it does actually look as if it could do with a bit of bit of maintenance near water level. It's a bit could do with some some cementing in there. Uh, we don't want to lose something as old as this. It survived numerous great floods. Uh, in fact, you can probably gather what happens when there's a big flood. The water goes through where that Range Rover is and takes a shortcut because the, the level of the land there is lower than the top of the bridges so that's what happens now you see the uh, stonework here It's a pity that the uh, top story was lost. I can remember it when there were windows up on the top. That Stanley Cookson was so, managed to save the stones from those and they've been used in, in other places. But everything now is um, pointed up so that it doesn't deteriorate any further. Yes, there's the Clapper Bridge. Again, this one gets overridden by the floods. Now, there used to be uh, an entrance um, porch over that doorway, and it got taken away and ended up in Trodden. Outside uh, what was trodden laundry in the old days. But, um, it was like the one on the house we've just looked at earlier, earlier on, further down the village. That's the trouble with autofocus, isn't it? Yeah. It's a pain. Yeah. Kills what you want because you, yeah. There's autofocus on this thing as well. Aye. So I've got to do the same trick with this. I've actually turned it off <laughs> so it's actually on distant focus. Aye. Yeah. So uh, we, we tend to take photographs of one, take photographs of the other, or two, so you can't help it. Can't it happens. <laughs> it, it proves you were both there anyway. So, uh, oh, the little Aye. dog having fun in the water I was, there. I was in, oh God, where were we? In a game park in South Africa. It was a kudu, and he was so, where the girls are now, he was there, but I yeah. couldn't get him with the autofocus, Because of the trees. so I had to go on manual, I'm yeah. on the man because I had a, a bottle 50mm lens, oh, right. and beautiful, but I had to go on the manual to get it, but when I got it, I've got it framed now, it's absolutely beautiful, Excellent. You can, with the naked eye you can hardly see it, you know, you can get it on the shot and you can enhance yeah. it, and yeah. it's, it's really good. I would like to get a camera which could zoom live. I mean, this one does does zoom, but it only zooms when you start it up. It uh, doesn't zoom live. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, shame. This will be on the internet uh, by tomorrow, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now the barn over there used to be uh, in a ruinous state, but that got completely rebuilt and re-roofed, and. Uh, it's now got various artefacts and things in it. The hall used to have three floors. 
as you can see by this tower thing here. But almost all of it's got taken away. There are pictures of it, photographs of it still, but uh, that's all there is left. It would have looked different with the porchway on it. I don't know whether that's still in Trodden or not. Just, I was just saying to the camera there, there was, there was a porch, there used to be a porch on there at the front, like on the uh, one of the buildings a bit further down the village, one that's been been rebuilt. It was it, it was two range two storeys in Forage now, is it? That's uh, what it says on there, yeah. yeah. He got, it, he went to Trodden outside the laundry and, and it was it's a terrific angle. I know how it, how it didn't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's a pity it couldn't be brought back. Mm, yeah. But then again, uh, things like that don't happen unless you get uh, a big ph rich philanthropist or somebody doing it. Mm. All this has been recorded, by the way. So uh, I should have said that before I started. <laughs> so the big piece de resistance of this place, of course, is the fireplace. You also notice that the windows there are totally different in style to the rest of the building. Much taller and also wider as well. I'm not sure whether this, in fact this probably did post date that section at the far end, probably did. Because there's a break in the wall, you can see an, an end in the structure there, just to the left of the uh, obviously non-original doorway. Uh, where the building must have ended at one stage. In fact, I think the far end is the oldest bit. The very oldest bit. through a window at the uh, main hall and there's the big open fireplace which is the feature that the hall is best known by I think. Nobody really knows what exactly that little keyhole shaped thing for on the, on the right was for. There's about five or six different functions suggested for it. And again on that upstairs window there's a different design on the on the stonework to that one over there. And we're looking at, we were looking at um, a weaving, basket weaving course I think, one of the local skills being shown. Snip through inside the building, isn't it? There were dates on either side of the doors there, but they've been damaged. Kid, there used to be shops here where you could buy drinks and so on. You can still make out the ruins of them, but uh, the powers that be have obviously decided it's not of sufficient historical value to, 
to dig them out. But there were houses, little shops, going all the way along the back here, almost as far as the barn. Hello. This is the inside of the building. There, there were walls here when I was a kid. Nearly all gone there. That's a ruined. Hello. Ruined. There's still some some stone down the bottom. I'm actually recording this. I'm, I'm not recording your children though. I'm gonna avoid that. I'll avoid them if I can. So the rooms were quite large, as you can see, and uh, I can remember when this doorway was actually knocked down by vandals and has been restored. This was actually pushed off and has been rebuilt. There were shelves in that little alcove there as well. In fact, it's so long ago that was a push, was a push down and put back on, you can't tell. It's been very well aged in. And that's the inside of the, of the window that I rescued. Most of that on the left has been rebuilt. You can't tell that, but uh, it was rebuilt. And this, I think, was the oldest part of the hall. Anyway, I want to pause it now and uh, walk up the Dean a bit. Okay, well, I didn't actually go up the Dean straight away. I went past the, the basket weavers and looked in the, uh, the old barn, which is now an exhibition se centre. Uh, there's an exhibition in there tomorrow, actually. 2nd of October, so if anybody sees this and is in the area, which is very unlikely actually at this time of night, uh, then that's on tomorrow. So let's move this off and bring in the next file, hopefully, in a moment, which is going to be this one. So we're now going to go and look at those trees for Bridget. I don't know whether I can walk through here or not. We probably can or can't we? Yes we can. This was the barn for the uh, the hall. But all these, all this area here was houses, small houses.
Does anybody know if filming's allowed in there? Filming? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, okay, thank you. I've already caught you on camera as well, by the way. Does, if uh, that's any worry to you. No, it's not, eh? I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see this, to see this being done. I've never seen this being done here before. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be on the internet tonight. So this is the Isle Barn, which, uh, as I said, was completely rebuilt. Oh no, that's fine. I don't know, look, see... It's it, just a shame that all the chairs are in for reacts, tomorrow. It reacts brilliantly to, to light, does this thing. I don't know how it does it, but it does. Oh, yeah. So that, Max of Life comes in tomorrow, if you want to know what it is. <laughs> so, uh, um, I normally go out live on air, but not, not at the moment, because there's not enough signal down here to no, do it. No. So, yes, I remember when they were rebuilding all this. All right. It's remarkable, all this, all this, this woodwork is put together with wooden pegs. There are no nails in there anywhere. Well, there weren't anyway. There shouldn't be now if it's been done authentically. And I don't see any reason why it shouldn't have been. That's absolutely brilliant. There's an exhibition in here next week, if, if this somebody sees this before uh, next week, uh, there's an exhibition in here next week, free on timber. It's advertised in the window outside. But it's beautiful this, it really is. This is the kind of repair job that will be done on Tong Hall in Middleton when they get round to it. That kind of structure up there is very similar to what was uh, in their roof at Tong Hall. Very similar. You see how the, the bases are raised off the ground to avoid damp. Raised on stone, stone pillars. That's an ingenious touch, that is. If that hadn't been done, I don't suppose the building would be here. The roof would have come in. And this, as I say, is the Isled Barn. Uh, it's called the Isled Barn because the pillars uh, are divide off on each side a separate section of the building from a, a central section where I'm standing. And uh, there's an, a, an aisle on either side which could have had places for animals and things like that. And there was also upstairs or a raised area on top in some parts of it as well, which hasn't been re re rebuilt on this occasion. So uh, it's the exhibition centre. The exhibition is uh, is October the second, which is Sunday tomorrow. So now we'll go on to the next clip, which starts in the barn and goes on up the dean itself.